Okay, hello everybody. <laughs> I'm glad that we are again together and then we can proceed our tradition with our congresses. And of course, uh, we try to do our best and uh, all our team, first of all, uh, Mitri Arlov is doing everything to organize everything, to organize it. So today, as usually, as every year, I want to give you some overview what, what was done and what is going on and to share some ideas. Okay, so let's go to uh, my presentation. Okay, here we are. Okay, so now we can see it, yes? Okay, so Bible development in this year. So now we live in very unusual time. We live in the times of change. And always when we have this time, it is a lot of problems that we experience. And first of all, it is natural disasters. If we look to this, what's going on this year, it is really unusual. We have floods and you know that in Bangladesh, it was more than 5 million people who was left homeless. It was hundreds of people died in the flood. We have uh, big fires in different countries. We have deserts that are coming. We have global warming and it's uh, really a global process. We have huge ecology, ecolo ecology problems and still we contaminate our nature. We totally changed our environment totally and unfortunately in very bad way. So we are losing our environment. We don't have any more natural forests, we don't have any more natural uh, landscapes, we have artificial, very bad, very dirty landscape. Now we have a new problem, we have war, and it's not only for Ukraine and Russia, it is for the worldwide, because it is a new wall, new wall between Russia, between other countries and uh, European countries. And of course, it has tremendous negative influence to all the world, because you know that prices are growing, going up. First stage was this COVID program. This project was very, very efficient to destroy our economy worldwide. And now you see prices are coming up for everything. First of all, for gas, for oil, and it's worldwide process and it's impossible to stop it. So we live is really very dangerous time of transformation. So what can we do? We can only use our internal power. We can only use our spiritual power. We can use love, compassion, tranquility, and forgiveness. This is the only topic that we can use in, in what we can do in these very dangerous and bad times. And Bible, our community is one of the way how all together we can develop. So regardless of all these problems, of all these situations that we had worldwide, we have very good development in Bible. So in this uh, one year, we have uh, increase of number of active Bible users by 22%. So it's really not bad. Sales has grown up to 50%. And we need to tell that we have very good uh, teams in different countries. And for example, Christian, who was presenting just now with a very interesting presentation, he's one of the best. We have very good presenters. We have very good distributors in different countries, in the United States, in uh, South America, in many, many different countries. So late by the end of the Congress tomorrow, we'll maybe make some special awards for the best people. We did four software updates, and you know that our software now looks absolutely different, totally different from what it was before. We had first university course in Spain with university diplomas. And you know that uh, many people, they passed this uh, course. It was not easy. It was very complicated. This uh, autumn in uh, October, we have second course and we'll move it forward. So it's really, it was found very efficient. 
we published 18 new papers and videos and they uh, you can find them in our hive on iomap.club uh, 61 seminars webinars was conducted worldwide that is 35 percent more than in previous year so before it was mostly uh, media or love who was trying to do this now we have many uh, teachers many uh, really very well prepared people who can do it in different countries and this is really what we are going to do what that's our goal very important topic very very important topic finally we have got microsoft license finally so now and it will be encrypted in the bioval software in the next release and bioval software is now available on apple store so in if before some people had problems when they installed our software on Apple, first of all, on Windows as well. Now we have overcome it. We got license for Apple. It was very complicated process. Can you can believe me? And we have license for Windows as well. So we it, so it took us more than a year, but we did it. And uh, now, what's again very important? New by well software and by well devices are fully compatible with the newest macbook with m1 chip and now it will be m2 chips so again it took a lot of efforts and we need to thank first of all again Dmitry Lov because he did a lot of a very um, clever complicated development and adjustment and it was finally done so we have 11 new distributors and uh, we have more subscribers to our uh, YouTube channel. So it's grown practically twice up to 47%. So you see, all in all results for this year are very good, all in all. And we have very big plans for this year. Uh, now, maybe it's too early to tell about all the plans, but I am sure that by the end of the year, will be able to present some really very interesting development. And it's going on, everything. We are moving forward step by step, but we hope it would be done. And now I want to show you to pay attention to a couple of topics. First of all, I pay attention uh, to this uh, paper. You can find this paper, it's published. You can find it in, at iomap.club. And this paper uh, was uh, presented together with my student. She's a very talented lady, and she defended her PhD this year. Uh, it was a very uh, complicated process, PhD on psychology. And this is not just about Arctic zone. This paper gives very uh, precise correlation between bio-well measurements, heart rate variability, HRV measurements, and psychological measurements. So it's one of the more proof that all these methods, they are very well correlated. And you know, in most of our research, in our laboratories, in our centers, we are using in parallel biowell and HRV. And uh, sometimes, of course, if we can, we can use, we use electroencephalography as well, but it's much more complicated, of course. So all these methods, they reflect a variation of the human energy field. Would it be related to heart in HRE or in overall energy field, like in bio? So that's very important uh, correlation. And I really suggest you, if you do some research, to pay attention to this paper. Another interesting paper uh, that I pay attention to, this is a um, paper that we did with our colleagues from Canada. Uh, this is an uh, idea to develop uh, quantum approach to consciousness and to alter the state of consciousness. Because we did a lot of research on consciousness, on altered states in previous years, and we are moving forward in uh, current research with this. And this paper gives an overview of some data and it gives some framework of theoretical discussion. So 
if you are interested in this field, I really um, ask you to look to this paper. Then we have, as I've we told, many other papers, but you can have a look. But now next topic, those are our development. Now it's finally, we were able to develop this bio -well element. Uh, I will show you a little video that will give you some... Hello everybody, I am Professor Konstantin Korotkov and today I want to show you our new device, BioWell Element device. This device allows us to measure water, liquids, different uh, stuff, and uh, this device designed for experiment. And we have a special program, uh, it's the name of this program BioWell Element, which allows us to measure these different substances. So, for the beginning, this, we take off this cover, the light special cover, which allows us to use different systems. Now let's connect, for example, a metal cylinder. Okay, so we apply this metal cylinder on the electrode. And uh, what's important, we always take all the measurements with thin plastic film laying on the electrode because electrode is very expensive. So we need to be careful with this. And we go to um, settings. Now I go to images, setting. And here in settings, I can change different parameters. I can change the level of black. I can change uh, uh, some uh, parameters power and the most important for us is power so let's get image and let's see what we have here okay okay so now i have to interrupt myself <laughs> because it's quite a long video but this video is specially designed um, for people who will be using this bio -well element so as i've told this is for water leaves uh, different sub. Uh, just in our, one of our university, we study uh, little mouses. Um, we can study cats, dogs. So it's a lot of different applications, and uh, we are now ready to present this new device. And now it will be available. Next topic uh, that I want to discuss today. This is a topic of measuring environment and human emotions with Sputnik, because we know that many people now use Sputnik. And we have many, many questions about this topic. That is why I decided that I spent uh, next maybe 40 minutes describing this topic. So, you know this, we have several um, different uh, models of Sputnik. The latest model is very convenient for use. It is very nice, uh, finally. And it's based on the idea of five elements of nature. So in principle, with BioWell, we can measure all those five elements of nature. And we do this in our research uh, with uh, both with Sputnik and with different electrodes. For example, you can put uh, just metal stick in the, the tree and that you are measuring wood. Or you can put some stick in earth or stone and you are measuring uh, earth and ground and water, of course, as well. And the principle of um, Sputnik, it is the principle of uh, resonance contours. So inside BioWell system, we have a resonance contour. In principle, it's like a Tesla coil. And when we apply very short impulse, electrical impulse to the initial coil, we have high voltage impulse on the secondary coil. But the idea that the secondary coil is open, it's not closed. That is why it allows us to emit standing electromagnetic waves in space. So every impulse generate this group of standing waves. And they distribute in space. And it doesn't matter would it be in some room, in some premise or outside. And then propagation of those space, of those waves, depend on the uh, condition of environment. So it depends on different parameters. We'll discuss it. I will tell a couple of words about this. And uh, for example, depending on the room, depending on the environment, we'll have different signal, different propagation, and different connection. So different uh, capacitance. 
And let's imagine we have a person staying in the room. Everybody of us, we are conductive subjects because we have some conductivity of our skin and different people have, of course, different conductivity. So we uh, have conductivity and that's why we change propagation of this, those electromagnetic waves. And let's imagine uh, this person has emotions. It means it change sympathetic parasympathetic balance and it change the conductivity of our skin. So it changed propagation of electromagnetic waves. If there are a group of people, then of course, uh, it's even maybe stronger effect. So this is a physical explanation of Sputnik principles. And this principle allows us to understand why when we do meditation, we can take some measurements. But of course, we have many other effects that are not explainable in this, uh, by this model. So it is much more complicated. We believe that in principle, uh, Sputnik operates on quantum principles. But of course, it's not a story. Read my paper that I uh, presented yesterday, um, before. But in reality, we are measuring metal cylinder. We are measuring photons coming from metal cylinder. Please keep this in mind. So all the information we extract from discharge in the air that comes around this metal cylinder, very well known to you. And of course, this discharge depends on parameters of air. And first of all, it depends on humidity and temperature. This course shows us that the higher the temperature, the more humid may be the air. That is why when we are in far north, of Canada or of Russia, in Siberia or uh, not in Yakutsk, uh, air is very, very dry. And it's very well known that it's, if you have wet clothes, uh, you can put it in uh, cold weather, in, uh, in cold, in frost, and it will be dry quite soon. When, but when you are in a very warm area, in very high temperature, then air would be very humid. And that's why, again, it's very well known that very often, sometimes you have all your stuff is wet when you are in those areas. So it means that Sputnik signal depends on humidity and it means temperature, altitude, because again, with altitude, we have different uh, humidity and different parameters and air contents. So if we have many gases in the air, it changed parameters. That's why when we are measuring from our finger, one of the uh, uh, parameters that has strong influence, that's a emanation of gases from our skin because we, we smell <laughs> and it means gases and every dog can feel it. So you see, it's so many parameters. That's why when we take measurements, for example, in Hong Kong, humidity is 70%, sea level, and when we're measuring in Colorado, humidity 15% to 1,000 feet altitude, 1,000 to about 2,000 or even 4,000 feet altitude. So it means, of course, different parameters. And this is the principle of our calibration. Because when we do calibration, it means we are measuring parameters of photons emanated by metal cylinder. And we assume that those parameters should be absolutely the same in different conditions, both in Hong Kong and in Colorado. Because this metal cylinder has no emotions, has no ideas, <laughs> so it should be absolutely the same. That is why that's the principle of calibration. But uh, when you do measurement with Sputnik, of course, you need to take special procedure. And first of all, the areas of application, those are energy active zones, historical places, ancient monuments, meditation, and influence of different devices. Those are areas of application of Sputnik. And let's see what we can do and how we can do it in different situations. Let's start from meditation. That's very interesting uh, process. And Sputnik may be very, very efficient 
both for training your meditation process because the more efficient you are in your meditation the more uh, you will see effect on sputnik and of course by measuring different process collective process we'll talk, we'll talk about so what we do how we do this measurement first of all we do calibration that's obligatory we Bio-well devices, bio-well too. Uh, calibration takes just seconds. So we always ask, please do calibration every day. We had long discussion with our team, with Dmitry, first of all, and other people. Uh, uh, Dmitry wanted to block uh, activity of the device if we, people don't do calibration. Uh, then we decide, no, no, it's too, it's too, um, it's too tough. <laughs> we are still in freedom society, so we don't need to block it. <laughs> No, no, no. But we need to give a warning. So if you don't do calibration in appropriate way, then we put your right. Please do calibration. You know this is new software. So that's that's a good way. So first calibration, then measurements in environmental mode. So take some measurement in the background before you start your meditation, and then in the meditation process, and then compare before and after. So I uh, then we are using different parameters. And we in Sputnik, we use all those parameters like area, energy, obligatory standard deviation, and entropy. In principle, standard deviation entropy, they are interrelated. Area and energy, they are in not in inter, they are not interdependent because you know that energy is multiplication of area to frequency. So uh, so we, we know this formulas, you can find it in our papers. Uh, standard deviation is very, very important parameter. In, in principle, it shows, gives us a lot of information. Entropy, the derivation from standard deviation, but still it may be useful. So I pay attention to this paper. This paper was published uh, this uh, year, just this year, just recently. And idea was as follows. Uh, we had uh, seminars. One seminar was done with uh, Christian Borders, Borde in France. Oh, no, no, in, not in France, in uh, Madrid, in Madrid. It was during our course on, uh, in the university. Another uh, meditation uh, measurement was done in Mexico City. It was organized by our dear colleague and friend, Victor Hugo Arguelles. And in both cases, we have a group of people. It was about 30 plus people. And we have several uh, instruments. So idea for our workshops uh, of advanced level. It's not just lecturing. It's not just presentation. But it's very active work with instruments. So we ask everybody to bring their Bible. We ask to bring their computers. And we all work together with different exercises, with different trainings. And then uh, we can see how you can do it, what you do right, what you can do wrong. We can test what's your devices. And of course, it gives you hand-on experience and it gives us understanding what we do right and what we need to improve in our activity. So in this case, it was nine Sputnik devices with computer standing in one room in Madrid and five in Mexico City. And please have a look. These are results of measurements in Madrid for nine instruments. If you have a look, you see that uh, this was practically no effect. This was very strong effect. Oh, no. This was practically, again, very little effect or practically no effect. In all others, it was some effect. And pay attention, please pay attention. In most cases, the area dropped down. In most cases. In some cases, it was some increase, but it's not very significant. But in Mexico City, it was different. Again, in one instrument, it was no effect. In one, it was increase of signal, and even in two. In two instruments, it was decreasing signal. So 
What does it mean? It means that first of all, uh, instruments, Sputnik, responds to the environment. And it is staying nearby some people. And it is people influence some of some particular people. So that's why if we look to entropy, we see a really big change in entropy in uh, for eight instruments in Madrid. You see really dramatic change. One instrument didn't respond. And for all five instruments in uh, Mexico City. It means that, uh, what does mean again, let's uh, make it more careful, more precise. What does it mean area? Area, it is amount of photons emitted by metal cylinder that we detect and uh, we calculate. And entropy, it is derivation from standard deviation, from variation of signal. So we see in this case, variation of signal was much more significant compared with amount of photons. So it depends. If you look to graphs, you see it may be area, you see it maybe here it's very clear. It was before for about 15 minutes and after. And you see very clear effect, decrease of signal and increase of signal. Again, if we compare this, signal with latest, of course, we see a very big effect. Here again, we see decrease of signal or increase in signal. It's Madrid workshop, Mexico City workshop. And Mexico City, very strong jump of signal and some slow decrease, but then again, drop down after some time. So it means again that uh, it shows us when we have one instrument measuring meditation, we can always claim, oh, it was some variations. It was some non-significant variations. But if we have several instruments responding, then we understand it's really significant effects. At the same time, every instrument has different effect because meditation is not one at the same process for all the people. It is many, many different types of meditations. Different teachers teach different types of meditation. Different people can do it differently. So that's why if you people sit with closed eyes and relaxed, it doesn't mean they meditate deep. It's totally different. And this measurement allows us to understand it. What is, is it really efficient or is it just imagination? So, that's, uh, we have a lot of experience of this kind, maybe now hundreds of measurements of the different meditation, in different countries, and it's really very interesting. Another interesting topic, as I've told, this is energy active zones, because our Earth, it is very interesting um, uh, subject. We have tremendous influence to our Earth from the cosmos. So we are part of cosmic process. First of all, sun, of course, it's our nearest, it's our strongest, and all our life depends on sun, moon as well. And you know that uh, all the nature respond to moon cycles and we are part of nature. So we responded uh, more or less strong. Then we have a lot of influences from cosmos, both from our solar system and from uh, the universe, uh, from uh, our galactica. So it is shown now, it's proven that it's really significant effect due to Einstein concept, Einstein theory. And those are external influences, but we have tremendous internal influence. Our Earth, it's not just a piece of rock. It is very, very life system very active energetic system. We don't know what's going on inside. We have some concept, some theory, but maybe it's totally wrong. And I believe it's uh, most of scientists, they think that it's totally wrong. But still we know we have volcanoes, we have uh, movement of the Earth's uh, crest, we have activity of, so it's a life system. And that's why we feel it on the surface and even gravity. 
it is shown now that gravity is not the same all over the Earth. We have low spots of gravity, for example, in the coast of India, and some very high spots in South Pacific Ocean. And it's absolutely unknown why it happens. I've been once to Australia, and I was invited to one place, and uh, we came to one road, it was a slope on the road, and uh, they put a ball, and ball ran, ran, uh, ran down along the slope. Then they pour water, and water came up along the slope. So how we can explain it? No explanation. It's only some guess. So it means that we are under the influence of different process, moon cycles, solar eclipses, strong changes of weather, earthquakes, electromagnetic environment. And you remember I mentioned you how many parameters influence our readings. So that is why we can take readings, we can do it at some particular moment, and then we need to understand how to evaluate this. We have a lot of results at our website, and you can have a look at this, of course, you know. You can uh, download a lot of papers, and we try to uh, add more papers, and they are about environmental uh, measurements, uh, meditation, distant intention. So it's all available, and if you are interested in this, of course, you have a look. But I give you an example only of the latest paper. This paper I, uh, was published this year again, just recently, and um, uh, it was a paper about the influence of pyramids. Because you know that pyramids, it's very big part of our ancient history, not to tell about Egyptian pyramids, but in, uh, you know, now that pyramids exist worldwide in different countries. And that's why for many, many years I was interested in pyramids and to, I was interested to study pyramids. And after several years, I was able to collect data and was able to present this as a um, paper. So let's start uh, uh, briefly a description of different uh, these cases. Bosnian pyramids. Uh, I met this wonderful person, Dr. Samas Managic. And uh, he is an archaeologist. He has a PhD on archaeology in the uh, American University. And then he was originally from Bosnia. And he came back to his country. And he told that this big wall, big this mountain, this is the pyramid. And this is nearby a very little city uh, in Bosnia. Bisoko, and he started excavations using his own money because he was able to raise his money being in the United States. And he found those huge slabs like this. And he claimed that this is a pyramid. I came there, I was looking to this, but I was not strongly impressed because in the mountains, being a professional mountain, I've seen many different uh, mountain types and then uh, some slabs of this kind I've seen in the mountains. But later on, he took me to another pyramid, moon pyramid, it was sun pyramid, another moon pyramid, and there it was no doubt that this is man-made, absolutely no doubt. For example, they made excavation and it's clear artificial structure. So it's clear that it's different layers of artificial structures. Then when he have done excavations on different levels of this pyramid, he found this type of tiling, like a road coming along the pyramid. Of course, he didn't have enough resources to uh, make all excavations, but in different areas where he did this excavation, he found these different slabs, the different tiles, and of different size, but it's absolutely clear it's uh, man-made and made by ancient civilization. So now uh, they have, uh, they found three pyramids and you know that the three pyramids, they create practically perfect triangle because it may be 
inside the circle. And, uh, and of course, it's possible to go there to take measurements. But later on, uh, Dr. Asmanagic was able to find not only pyramids of this kind, but to find uh, tunnels. So uh, local people, uh, the local boys demonstrated him some cave. And being very highly trained archaeologist, he uh, found that it's not just a cave, but those are tunnels, but tunnels filled with earth. And for now, practically for eight years, they do excavations. They opened a lot of those tunnels. Again, no doubt that it's man-made. No doubt, because there are some walls that cover some other um, side tunnels. Now they uh, excavated several kilometers of those tunnels. And uh, most of those tunnels, as I've told, they were covered with earth and debris. And being inside these tunnels, you feel wonderful. You feel some type of excitement because they found that in those tunnels is very high concentration of negative ions. So it is very good for human health, for breathing. And of course, uh, we did many measurements. Uh, and you see it's absolutely a different. Sun pyramid has the highest energy. Moon pyramid has a little bit lower, but still very high. In one of the tunnels, it's the same level of energy as in moon pyramid. And then in different areas. And of course, at the basement, at the, basement uh, the energy is very low. And we have the notion of uh, activity of the environment. So in all the tunnels, this parameter was, was on very high range. Stone circle, this is a, a circle uh, outside of uh, different special stones. And you see its activity there is not very good. And when we've been measuring people, and now um, the team of Dr. Asmanagis, they use biowell for practically everybody who are coming there. It's a measurement for 50 people. And you see for all the people, level of stress coming down, energy increasing. So it is all parameters improvement, tremendous improvement. And you can see it on chakras, you can see it on energy field, you can see it on all our parameters. And now they are uh, using this, their center as some type of healing center. So people are coming there, they're coming there for treatment. And they claim, and you can find a lot of testimonials on their website, that a lot of people has very, very positive effect. So that is uh, Bosnia. Another very important and very well-known place, this is Teotihuacan. It's uh, part of great history of Mexico. And in Teotihuacan, in pyramids, it was great civilization and it existed for several thousand years that dominated huge territory. And now it's very well excavated. Now you can go there, you can climb pyramids. So it's interesting, very interesting place. And we did measurements over there several times. But what's interesting, quite recently, it was found that against those pyramids down there. Those tunnels, it was two tunnels uh, found uh, during earthquake, and those tunnels again, they were covered with earth and debris. So it is absolutely clear that some people closed this, this tunnels. And um, I was invited uh, by Dr. Gomez. This is the main archeologist of this, who excavated those tunnels. And we came there, we did measurements, both on pyramids and in the tunnels. And it was absolutely clear that energy was very high at the pyramids and very low in this case in tunnels. But in pyramids, on the top of uh, sun pyramid, moon pyramid, can uh, circle pyramid, the energy was much, much higher compared with the energy in uh, the hotel. And then uh, last year, we did a big uh, trip in Mexico. By car, we traveled from Mexico City to the Yucatan. 
through different areas. And of course, in all those ways, it took us um, 10 days or 11 days. In all those uh, travels, we were able to visit um, ancient sites and to take measurements over there. So it was Mont Alban. Mont Alban, it's a fantastic place. It's a site of uh, Toltec civilization, very ancient civilization. It existed for more than 3,000 years. And when you come there, you feel this energy. Then uh, Palenque, again, very famous place. Uchmal, fantastic pyramids, fantastic place. Chichen Itza, one of the most famous in this area. And in all those areas, what we do, we take measurements first in the hotel. And you see these blue lines, those are measurements in the hotel, just nearby the pyramid. And then we take measurements in uh, the pyramidal complex in, in different places. So we use two modes in this case. First, as I've told, obligatory, we make calibration in the hotel. Because there, typically, we have good uh, Wi-Fi. That's obligatory. Then we go to the site, and we take measurements either in the environmental mode for 12, 13 minutes on every spot, or if we don't have time, we take measurements in one finger mode for 50 times, 50 times in one, two seconds interval. So depending on your time, because you understand if you have 12 minutes for every spot, that's okay. But sometimes we don't have this time. So we need to take uh, this much faster and then you use one finger mode. But what's important, please try to do it without people around. Because people may have very strong influence on your measurements. So, and you see, in all those places, in all the sacral places, the energy in the pyramidal complex was much higher than the energy of outside. So it shows us that all those places with pyramids, they have very spe special energy that is really much higher than the energy outside of this complex. Then uh, next year again, we were able to go to Belize. Belize, it's a little country between Guatemala and Mexico. And this is tremendously interesting country. It is one of the most fantastic countries uh, I've ever been. In this country, they have forests, jungles, they have mountains, they have very interesting nature, they have rivers, they have wonderful seashore with uh, second biggest uh, coral reef, barrier reef in the world after Australian barrier reef. And you, if you swim there, you can see fantastic uh, animal sea creatures. You can swim with sharks, with turtles. So it's ama amazing. And travel in Belize is very interesting because they have a lot of Mayan complexes. And we were able to visit Mayan complexes that are very well kept. And what's important in Belize, you can climb to the top of every pyramid. In Mexico, it is impossible now, it's closed because there are millions of people and they preserve it. So it's very clever. In Belize, it's not so many people and you can climb it. And you see, they have amazing subjects over there. Amazing, they are very well preserved and uh, you can go there, it's a whole, it's not just one pyramid. It's a whole complex of pyramids. And we've been there together with our dear friend uh, Victor with his um, girlfriend. And we were able to visit different pyramids and to make measurements over there. And again, please have a look. This is energy outside of pyramid in uh, different places, but outside. And those are energy in different pyramidal complexes. And you see the difference. It is absolutely clear statistical difference. Again, no doubt that these pyramids have influence. But the question is, whether this is influence of the complex itself, of the geometrical form, or this is influence of some ancient emotions. Because we know that in ancient buildings, in temples, in churches, in mosques, 
we have some energy transformed by human emotion for centuries. So that is why uh, I was lucky last year to go to Siberia, because in Siberia we have uh, energy, uh, we have pyramid in Siberia. There are city of Tomsk, and in this city uh, people uh, built artificial pyramids several years ago. Uh, the constructor was Valery Uvarov. This guy, he is very much interested in ancient uh, civilizations, in, in particular in Egyptian civilization. He has a very clear idea how pyramids should be organized. So he created idea. He told that at the top of pyramid should be this huge crystal. And he was able to persuade one a Siberian businessman, person who has a lot of money, uh, who is quite a rich person, and this person decided to build this pyramidal complex. So they have main pyramid and they have satellite pyramids. So they have idea at some moment they plan to make some something around, maybe it will be some uh, living place, maybe it will be some entertainment place, still it's not decided yet, because it was a lot of fighting with church in, in, in Tomsk. Um, and this uh, pyramid, it is artificial, so it's 13 meters high, 43 feet, and inside this is hollow. So inside it's just a construction. And there are several levels of this pyramid inside. So you can be inside, you can walk there, you can stay there, and they use it for meditation. Uh, being inside, they believe that there are some energy coming from this huge crystal uh, from the top. And we did measurements. So you see, the highest level of energy was measured outside of pyramid just nearby of pyramid, but outside. Uh, then at different levels, at the highest level, energy was lower, but still very high, much higher than in the hotel, because in the hotel it was uh, like this. And on the level one and three, it was absolutely same energy as in the hotel. So again, if you look to this picture, so this is the fourth level, this was high energy. Outside again was very high energy, and this level and this level energy was practically the same as in the hotel. And on the level two, it was even lower. So again, it shows us that pyramid, it's not just piece of junk or piece of stone. It is very, very complicated structure. And we know this first of all from uh, pyramids of Giza because they have very complicated construction inside. They have chambers, they have tunnels inside, they have very special uh, system inside. So, and it's clear that this is organized not at random. It has, it is special uh, system uh, designed to energy influence. We don't know which influence, but uh, it's absolutely clear. Uh, unfortunately, we had only a couple of days to take these measurements, so we was unable to repeat it, uh, but I hope that one day in Tomsk they will make some uh, really systematic research about this uh, topic. And very interesting as well. We put one sensor inside uh, the pyramid, and it was operated for 44 hours non-stop. And only then, after we finish these measurements, we were able to um, make analysis of data. And you see what was absolutely clear. It was uh, at this moments one, three, and one, two, three. It was moments when people were inside the pyramid. So again, it's absolutely clear that people has very strong effect. So again, if we take measurements of some environmental stations, of some sacred subjects, we need to do it without people around. Try to find this place because that's why it doesn't make sense to take measurements in Stonehenge. 
because there are thousands of people all the time over there. And but uh, when we take took measurements in different places in in, in uh, not only crop circles but in different places in Peru, in Mexico, in uh, different uh, in Cambodia, uh, in uh, Vietnam, on sacred places, then we always was able to find very interesting data. And uh, our colleagues uh, present their own data on these measurements, so it's, it's sure that's very interesting. So again, we need to understand that Sputnik is a very sensitive instrument. Uh, it has a lot of development in uh, during all those years. And the first idea that they've developed in uh, 1980s, uh, up to till now, it was tremendous transformation. But now we have very, very interesting device. It is well designed now. You find me. I like the design. It is. It works very precise. We need to rely on these measurements. But please remember what I've told in the very beginning. There are a lot of parameters that influence Sputnik measurement. So that's why we need to compare measurements at the moment. Next moment. Next day several other days, it may be different parameters. And one of our colleagues, um, Vadim Sidov, he was measuring with Sputnik every morning. And he found that it reflects uh, moon cycles very clear. We know that, and we have many data, a lot of data that reflects uh, um, solar eclipses. It uh, reflects different uh, turmoil in the atmosphere. We have a group of people who are measuring uh, earthquakes with Sputnik, and they can predict earthquakes um, two, three days before it starts. So uh, still this is uh, research stage, but it's possible to do it. So I'm sure that uh, we can do it uh, all together, because Sputnik now is available. Everybody can have it. And if you do this type of measurements, please, send us your data. Our next level would be, we are developing this new device. This is BioWell Mini, designed for mobile phone. We have the device for now more than, practically for two years now, but uh, it was a big delay due to this COVID situation, because one of the um, outcome of the COVID, maybe, you know, of course, this is a lack of electronic components. A lot of uh, plants, a lot of factories, they stop operating operations. And that's why it was big, big shortage of uh, electronic components for many companies. And first of all, it was shortage of um, Bluetooth chips. Uh, recently, a Chinese industry was able to develop their own Bluetooth chip. So finally, we got this Bluetooth chip. Finally, we were able to reinstall it in our system, to redesign, of course, also all uh, hardware. And we hope that in some time, we'll be able to put this Sputnik on the market. So we'll put this device on the market. And you can use it as BioWell, of course, for measuring human energy, but you can use it for Sputnik measurements as well. And one of the advantage of using this uh, mobile device with Sputnik, that we can detect coordinates of the place. It is much more complicated. Uh, it's possible, but more complicated with computer, but it's very easy with mobile phone. This, then we'll be able to fulfill our vision, my idea, to make energy map of the Earth to take measurements in different parts of the S through mobile phone, to detect coordinates, and to implement this on the active map. And this way we'll be able to have not only just map of measurements as we did, as we do now in uh, our website, 
but we would be able to make this um, very uh, map that will be interactive. So this is our next step. And I hope that maybe we'll be able to make to finish it by the end of this year, I hope, but if not, then next year for sure. So as you see, we have a lot of new ideas. We have a lot of new development. And that's why I thank you for the attention. Be happy and see you tomorrow and next time as well. Okay, thank you.